Welcome to Coleman Report Live. I'm Bob Coleman. We're talking Main Street. Small business lenders who help and grow. John Winnick, live from Houston Hobby. John, you're flying. Thank you so much for pinch hitting. And the rest, Lance and Katie and John Riosti, they're all, uh, they all bailed on us today. All good excuses. How you doing, John? I'm doing great. Doing great. I will say it's my first true business trip in, I don't know, five months. And I had seven meetings. And only one person could meet with me, and they had a conflict. So it is encouraging that people are anxious to meet again. Um, so it's it's good to be back. <laughs> uh, how's the travel experience? How's it differ from a year and a half ago? Um, you know, I was, I was telling Joseph, the flights themselves are as busy as they ever were. Um, <laughs> you know, the airports um, kind of feel like, you know, 50 to 60 percent like they were um, but the actual plane um partly because they've been bringing flights back slowly the flights are pretty full right right uh restaurants open at the airports i'm sorry are the restaurants open at the airports uh, yes the restaurants have come back to life um it's um I would say 75% of them seem to be open. Okay. Well, that's the first question we have in the poll question. Number one, have, uh, do you have one of your borrowers who have had a successful funding, or I guess we should say approval from the restaurant revitalization fund? John, you were one of the first ones that we talked about that called and said, hey, this is going to go fast, and it went fast. Uh, yeah, it's going to be well oversubscribed. There's going to be folks left out and I'm sure there'll be pressure to do something else. Well, that's too bad. Only 3% and know someone who's done that. Uh, that that's unfortunate. Um, we'll talk about that in a second on what's yeah. happening with that. Uh, we have the same question though for shuttered venues. Wow, exact same numbers. Those are the exact, almost the exact. That's too bad. Uh, 3% yes, 42% no, for those of you who don't have that. Joseph, you got to keep reminding me to give those numbers for people who aren't doing the screen. Finally, uh, two more questions. Do you anticipate hiring staff to service your PPP loans? The ones that are unforgiven. Interesting. Six percent. We'll let we'll let Lance know that when he gets back. And finally, does your lending institution do business in California? Interesting. Uh, for you, one in one in four, twenty-four percent yes, seventy-five percent no. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what they're calling it the mini CFPB program at California's Institute. Hey, first thing we need to do, John, is we need to do a correction from yesterday. Uh, I will take uh, responsibility. And I said FDIC insurance institutions reported an increase in income and in fee income of 36%. Uh, that's actually a decline. What has, so that was minor error, John. <laughs> and um, what has increased have been core deposits. Deposits are up 22.5% for the year. Uh, banking industry loan portfolio is increasing. Uh, obviously, um, loan delinquencies are down, but we see that as, as uh, extending. John, uh, real quick, uh, commercial real estate, 7A loans, um, outlook, uh, sort of your expertise. What do you see outlook in that specifically as it relates to 7A and 504? As far as loan demand? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually both demand, but I'm, I'm more interested in loan performance. Sure. I'm interested in collateral values. I'm interested in, is there going to be a bomb of foreclosures in this area? Is the economy going to absorb it with the strength that we have? What, what say you? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, speaking of kind of loan demand first, um, I think a lot of banks have significant headwinds this year for loan growth because whatever PPP they originate this year is going to be forgiven 
all the yeah. PPP they originated last year is going to be forgiven. So you're kind of starting behind the eight ball. Um, you also have the difficult challenge of underwriting deals in the COVID environment where 2019 was a great year, 2020 was not a good year, and now you're underwriting on a projection basis, which is inherently right. challenging. Having said that, the economy is growing at a high single digit rate. So high growth takes care of loan growth. So I expect loan growth is starting to heat up. The commercial loan pipelines are picking up. So that's very healthy. As far as credit quality, um, look, 12 trillion in stimulus will mask a lot of problems. I uh, wrote in my blog today that um, um, Hertz in one year has gone from bonds trading at 15 cents the dollar to a recovery from the shareholders. So effectively, effectively, we've gotten rid of essentially all of the big distressed debt problems. I, I can't recall a company that has closed of any significance in the past year. Um, having said that, there are real costs to that. Um, Inflation is starting to heat up, and there's going to be pressure on the Federal Reserve to put the lid on inflation the second half of the year. So I do think the um, commercial real estate, you know, will look good for a while, but could have some challenges when the Fed starts raising rates again. And of course, things like office, the big unknown with office is the extent to which people will return to their offices again. And there could be a permanent need for less office space. Yeah, that's, uh, let's start with that one first. Um, Expand on that. I guess what I want to know is I'm a lender and I'm going to be very leery of financing any type of business in a downtown area that's catering to office workers. And we don't know how many people are coming back. Yeah. I mean, um, I I will say just from my experience in downtown Chicago, aside from the pot bellies opening up two weeks ago, I can't really see any evidence that there's been a return of people back to the offices yet. Having said that, BMO Harris just announced they're bringing all their business bankers back um, the next couple weeks. So I think you will see the downtown starting to be more vibrant um, probably, you know, mid-June or so. And I think most people will come back by, say, September. Um, So, I mean, sure. I think you have to be concerned about um, the long-term impact of, you know, office jobs leaving downtowns but you know there's there's plenty of people who have a contrarian view i was just having breakfast with the cre lender at a large bank in texas and they're actively doing office loans because they feel that the office loan opportunities are better priced and better structured than the higher priced industrial loans that they're seeing so um, there's certainly good loans to be made in any sector right John, give us a, just an inflation 101. There's a lot of people, um, younger the younger millennials, younger generation on this call who haven't gone through that cycle. Why is inflation bad for lenders? Well, I think it obviously erodes the purchasing power. And it's, um, I mean, we haven't really had real inflation in this country since, you know, the early 80s. So it's a boogeyman that is becoming more and more in the distant mirror. Um, now we've had 12 trillion in stimulus. We added stimulus this year, even though we knew the economy was growing at a high single digit rate. So you're seeing inflation everywhere. You're seeing um, for commercial real estate, for example, the cost of lumber is 120% more than it was a year ago. Um, the cost of copper. Um, how about this? How about uh, used car sales? Um, used car prices are 10% higher than they were last year. You can't get a rental car anywhere. <laughs> so, That's you true. know, there, there does appear to be real inflation. The Fed is talking this all down. They're saying this is all temporary. This is port disruptions, COVID disruptions, and this is all going to go away pretty soon. Um, I guess we'll find out. But, you know, certainly um, it's not so much the problem of inflation per se, it's what the, the Fed has to do to stop inflation. And, and that's, you know, that's, my, that's my follow-up question is what's going to happen with the interest rates if we have inflation? Yes. So, I mean, interest rates are already up. Of course, that's just simply um, the bond market speaking. But um, 
look, um, the Fed will, if, if, if at some point the Fed will have to raise rates and they may have to do it fairly quickly because this economy could be overheating and that can be painful. And, you know, we've gone from unprecedented levels of stimulus, near zero interest rates, trillions of dollars of stimulus. And, you know, the, 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 the end of that is what happens when rates are higher and there's no more stimulus. So, you know, the economy could still be very strong because of the reopening part, but it's certainly going to have some challenges it doesn't have now. I know you don't have the answer, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. Uh, how high do you think rates will go? How high will prime rate go? Yeah, look at the smile. And yeah, no, no one knows. Yeah. I understand that. I guess give me one scenario where it could rise, and what would it rise to? I mean, I think I wouldn't be surprised this year if rates end up as high as they've been since '06. So, yeah, I could definitely see. I could definitely see. You know. A seven or eight percent coupon being a decent fixed rate, um, you know, at some point this year. And as a bank, I would be certainly nervous about lending money out for ten years right now because what looks like a good rate right now, if you're not match funding it or you're not hedging it somehow, you could end up with an upside down portfolio. Right. And there's two issues on that. Number one is the rise in interest rates are going to impact your borrower's cash flow, and number two, then the institution has an interest rate exposure. Um, very good. Um, what else are you working on, John? Um, by the way, John uh, does a great weekly blog report. Make sure that you get that. Uh, uh, he does. Um, he is. Are you the chair, or I know you're on board of directors of a of a CDC uh, summer core, correct? Yeah, I also chair the board of summer core, so I have my eye on the CDC world. Um, you know, the CDC. I mean, I think I, I think you're starting to see people. Uh, buy buildings and equipment again. So um, uh, certainly seeing an uptick in originations on the uh, the 504 side. So that's uh, that's certainly very healthy. John, had, John has an expertise in that. Uh, what else, uh, but his expertise really is in trading uh, portfolios. What else do you, what else are you following? What other trends are you following right now? Yeah, I mean, one thing I'm noticing is how hungry banks are for loans. Um, stuff that nobody think would ever get paid off is getting paid off. Um, we are, <laughs> I'll give you an example. Um, names should be remain anonymous, but. Oh, that's um, no fun. One of my clients is looking for a pool of, um, you know, they're deposit heavy asset light. They're looking for a pool of commercial real estate loans and, Northern There's California. a lot of a lot of letters in that category. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And you know, um, they're underwriting. They're going to pay a pretty significant premium. Their yield's going to be in the threes. And you know, the two of the larger assets in the initial pool we got were SROs and single room occupancy, which is about as it's a pretty good asset class to lend on because it's pretty safe. But from a standpoint of appeal, it's certainly collateral lenders try to avoid because they're All right, that's, give us some definitions what's an sro single room occupancy so basically it's it's like an adult dormitory where you have 120 to 200 unit rooms um and you share bathrooms it's very popular or well, it's it's you see it in chicago new york san francisco and i guess the point i was bringing up is my client was like won't touch that asset class then it's like, yeah, we kind of need loans. <laughs> you know, we'll do it. So, um, you know, I'm definitely seeing lenders stretch. I actually looked at a deal that a that a a, a, a bank did, and they underwrote a six unit apartment building with basically no income. And I was kind of scratching my head. Um, but you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely seeing some aggressive lending out there. So, um, you know, for banks to put on loans this year. Um, you know, they're going to have to move potentially down the risk curve. And, you know, that, that probably makes some people nervous. By the way, um, I forgot to give Daniel credit for um, pointing that error out to us. Daniel, thank you very much. Uh, when we missed uh, that, I, that was on me. I just, I, I missed the, uh, missed that. Uh, I want to talk real quick about restaurant revitalization. You called it. You said it was going to go fast. It went fast. This came from the administrator the other day. Uh, 
we had two uh, how many thousand applications uh, um, and uh, 21,000 have been funded, 2.7 billion. We have another pipeline, but right now applications will only be uh, accepted for loans under 50,000. What do you think of this program, John? And is this going to help? Oh, I mean, it's, I mean, let's be honest, it's a windfall. Um, you know, I mean, it's, you know, PPP was, hey, we're just going to, encourage you to keep your workers. We'll give you a couple months of money to improve your working capital. But like, this is on a whole different level. I mean, this is a basically, you know, actually it's not wiping the slate clean on 2020. It's actually turning 2020 into a, into a great year because you're basically getting back your lost revenue. But let's be honest, in 2020, you had a lot lower expenses, right? Um, you probably laid off a bunch of workers. So well, a lot, a lot I mean, of revenues. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my impression is, okay, if money for this program is unlimited, that's one thing, but given that they allocated a small amount for a bigger need, I think, I think the, the program should have been a lot less generous. Um, uh, you know, I think they, they should have spread the money around a little more than they will. Um, because I think what's going to happen is the businesses that get it are getting a windfall. And those that don't get it are still going to be struggling. So um, yeah, the numbers are uh, allocated for the program is twenty nine billion dollars. Applications that came in are for sixty five billion. So obviously they're already oversubscribed. They're already oversubscribed. They're already oversubscribed. Uh, but it is you can still apply for under fifty thousand. Does that mean they're going to get the money? Or we don't know. We don't. We don't know. I'm not going to ask you to guess on that. Uh, but it, it went got fast. The program up and running faster than I would have thought. So, I mean, I give them credit for that. Very good. Um, let's see. Uh, any other stories you're working on, John? Um, no, I mean, I just, uh, I think you saw the ban report today. Um, obviously, inflation is, is a big issue. Um, we talked a little bit about LIBOR. Um, yeah, I know most uh, SBA lenders, or the vast majority, use Is LIBOR still around? I thought it was dead. LIBOR ends at the end of this year. Okay. And the big banks have been pushing this so far, which is the secured overnight financing rate and trying to get that as the LIBOR replacement. I mean, it is the official, semi-official LIBOR replacement, um, but um, most banks, a lot of people are saying it doesn't really work for them because SOFR doesn't take into account a, you know, crisis or disruption in liquidity. Um, mm -hmm. So, say for example, there's some sort of problem in the money market industry or there's some sort of minor credit freeze, so far is not going to reflect that. Um, so, people have been using the Bloomberg um, alternative. Bloomberg has got a rate that's popular. And then there's also this uh, third one um, whose name escapes me. But um, there isn't quite a consensus. Now, the, the issue for lenders is... The vast majority, there are so many loans tied to LIBOR um, that have, you know, resets coming up. And obviously the documents allow you to substitute indexes, but, you know, clearly that could be an area of dispute with commercial real estate or. Yeah, I know business. that. Yeah, SBA, they allow LIBOR, they allowed lenders to choose LIBOR. A few did, but I know that's, um, it doesn't really impact lender, lenders today. Uh, what I'm curious about, though, is that will SBA allow lenders to tie um, the peg rate to one of these rates? I don't know. That's I, I'm just throw that out there. I, mean, I always thought Prime was a good marketing rate because, like, customers understand it. Understand Prime, but it's yeah. not really a market index, and it doesn't necessarily the spread reflect the bank's true cost of funds. And that was the whole point of using other indexes like FHLB and so on. Um, you know, they're they're better substitutes for a bank's cost of funds. Yeah, and I was you are allowed... using something other than Prime, but I understand that it's popular. <laughs> yeah, um, and SBA uh, will allow. They have a peg rate. They will allow other rates. If you're getting creative and you're using a rate for your conventional loans, look into 
using that rate for SBA lending if there's a little bit more of a spread for you. Um, that That is really a one-off, really niche stuff. I just mentioned that that there are alternatives. So you're not tied, you're not tied to prime. And you're also not tied to floating prime. You can fix these rates, right, John? Yes, obviously you can. Uh, yeah. Great. Okay, very good. John, I really, really want to thank you so much for pinching. I think we called you. I'll about dive a little logistic here. I'm standing in an airport, in an empty gate at Houston Hobby Airport. So I try to find a place that was as quiet as can be. But you did a good uh, job. Now, the, the real hopefully, question. Hopefully, hopefully you heard, heard us okay. <laughs> now, the real question is, where's your iPhone? Uh, my iPhone's somewhere missing. But the Coleman <laughs> webinar attendees are far more important. So we'll oh, be able to get this phone later. John, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Uh, always love having you on and love having your insights. Uh, thank you all for all joining right. us uh, for Coleman Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street. One entrepreneur. Thanks, John.